Hey friends, Catherine here. Final stage of our bookbinding whirlwind tour. Um, we are going to be making and attaching the cover to our book. Uh, the things you will need is your freshly made text block, a bit of chipboard enough to go all the way around your text block, and a paper or fabric or leather that you want to be the outside of your cover. You'll want to check and make sure that it is wide enough that it can fit all the way around the text block. If not, there's ways to work around that, um, but it's easiest if it just fits all the way around. Then what we're going to do is start making our pieces. So we're going to, with the chipboard, uh, measure out a section that is hanging over the book between a sixteenth and a quarter of an inch. This one's actually a little big, but this piece was already this, this piece of chipboard was already this size from top to bottom. So we're rolling with it because it's easier. So I'm just checking and making sure that the overhang is even on all sides. And I've drawn a line with my handy dandy blue pencil. Um, and I am going to cut it. Actually, let's see if we can't get that to cut on the cutter. The cutter might not want to cut it. We shall try and see how it ends up. Let's see. Okay, something like right there-ish. Because this will make sure that it's square. Are you all the way through? You are. Oh, nice. Okay, so we've done one to the size that we need for a cover. Now we need a second one to the same size. So we'll take and put a little mark and cut it on our cutter. Go line it up with the mark and set it down and cut are you through you are awesome hey hey all right so we've got two pieces that are the same size and those will be our covers for our text block and then we just need a piece that is the same height but is the width of the spine so let's line it back up grab our handy dandy blue pencil put a mark at the width of the spine and you want it to be just the width of the spine as close as possible um, if it needs to go over have it go over slightly you don't want it being under on the width of the spine you want it to be as exact as possible all right Is that... nope it's not all the way through okay try again there we go all right and there is our spine and that should be us done with the cutter and done with the chipboard at least the big piece anyway we will set it aside for another day and then pull back over our text block and our two pieces of chipboard and these are going to fit around the text block like so. So that's going to be the cover of our book. Now we need to attach it to our paper. And for that we're going to want a little bit of measuring. Well, not necessarily measuring, but we want to make sure that the distance between the two pieces and the centerpiece is equal and even. I can usually eyeball it and you can eyeball it too. That'll probably work. That'll work out. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so we take our favorite glue, favorite PVA glue and pour some on. 
We don't want to saturate this. We just want it covered. So not like sopping wet with glue, but like well adhered, you know? Like all the way out to the corners and everything. And there we go. Okay, set our sponge brush aside for the moment and then set this down. And kind of just smooth it along because we don't want to end up with air bubbles behind it either. That wouldn't be pretty. At least I don't think it would be pretty. Who knows, might be pretty. I don't think so though. Probably not. Okay. Then same thing for our spine. You want to when you're positioning your spine and the covers, you want to make sure that you leave enough space that the covers are going to freely move without hitting the spine, but not too much space so it doesn't just flop around everywhere and, and is super loose and like they aren't associated with one another. And that is a pretty wide margin, actually, when it comes down to it. Uh, it's a lot of there's a lot of play there it depends on how big your book is um how much room you want to leave and it also can be affected by how thick your uh chipboard is that's another consideration because the thicker the chipboard the more space you're going to need to leave for it to move without them hitting each other um so remember to keep that in mind because it will affect your finished product if your chipboard's thicker rather than thinner. And then this one's gonna be the tricky one because getting those two parallel, parallel is easy enough to do, but getting this one set on at an even distance, uh, at a distance that is even to the one that already exists is gonna be the challenge. And that's important because if one of them has like a larger gap than the other, your cover might overhang on one side further than the other. So, you know, try, do your best, eyeball it. Uh, measure it if you want to. Get out a ruler and mark down first where you're putting everything so that everything has exactly the right measurements and goes in exactly the correct place. That's an excellent thing to do. I don't do that because I'm lazy, but um, measuring is an awesome thing and I definitely recommend it. All right, and then let's see. If we set it down that side first, then we can move it if it's not go something like that. And then what we want to do is just grab a ruler real quick and make sure that everything's even with each other on the bottom. See, and it isn't. So while the glue is still wet, we can just kind of wiggle it around a little bit and everything is even. Good, okay. And then press it down. Make sure that we don't end up with any air bubbles. And we are good to move on to the next step. Okay, we're going to want to trim the corners sort of close to, but not touching the corner of the chipboard because the chipboard has dimension and that needs to be taken into consideration. We're going to be creating flaps that will fold over. Um, but because the chipboard has dimension, you wanna leave some space here. That way you don't end up with uncovered corners. Um, go, let's see something like this. And I'm not being any uh, particularly exact. It doesn't have to be perfect on this. It's gonna, any mistakes are gonna be, end up being covered. So, you know, just something sort of like that, making flaps that'll fold over and be tabs and whatnot. 
Um, and then maybe like here-ish. There we go. And one more. Kind of like that. There we go. All right. We now have tabs. And then we're going to put some glue on those. There is not enough glue on this sponge brush to do that. That's okay. We will put some glue down and then wiggle it around. We want the glue to be, we want the glue to be spread out on this because with paper it will want to uh, bubble up in the places that there are moisture. So if you have it even, it should mitigate some of that. I say should because it may not. And then you just want to fold it up tightly against the edge of your board and then press it down and try not to create wrinkles please and thank you and good okay and then what you want to do is you want to do it the same side so if you start with the sides first do the side first if you do the top and bottoms do the top and bottoms first but do both of one kind before you do the other ones. Makes it look nicer. It just ends up with a better result. Okay, there we go. Spread the glue around, make it even. And, okay. Then, Stand it up so that we get a nice crease to the edge of the chipboard and then press it in so that we don't end up with any wrinkles. Okay, most of the way done. Now what we're going to do is take and with a skewer would be perfect, um, but a, a, a something Hard, and we're going to just take and press these edges up to the top of the chipboard so that this will come over flat. It makes sure that there aren't any exposed corners and it makes sure that it folds down nicer. It gives you a nicer look when all is finished. Go on all of the corners. Okay, and then we will take and do the same thing for the top and the bottom flaps. Oh fudge, I just realized. And I was thinking about it earlier and tried to remind myself not to do that too. The pineapples are sideways. I wanted to make them up and down. It's too late now. There's no going back. The pineapples are just going to be sideways. That's fine. It's a funny pineapple book anyway, so it might as well be a funny sideways pineapple book. It will be fine. It'll work out. Now I'm angry at myself because I was just thinking about remembering to make sure that I put it the right way up too. That's too bad. That is a sad thing. Well, sad being a relative term, obviously. Um, it is an unhappy thing at the very least. There we go. But we are committed. All right, all the way out to the corners. Stand it up and bring it close to the chipboard and crease it there and then flip it over and press it flat. And then for these, you're going to want to press it toward the center on both sides because you want the paper to duck in to these creases on the spine here. And to facilitate that, we're going to take our 
handy dandy skewer and press it into those creases. We really want those to be well defined and even and pressed down and glued down. Okay, and then straighten those few creases out a little bit and then other side. <sighs> Darn it. Sideways pineapples. It's not what I wanted, but it's what has happened. And we will work with it. Okay. Glue everything else down. Same process all over again. Just put glue everywhere. All the way out to the edges, making sure that it's even and we don't crease anything. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to same thing over again. Stand it up against the edge. Give it a nice good crease there. And then press it down over. And then press it in a little bit so that it falls into those creases. And then with our skewer, take and roll the skewer in those creases as well. Make them nice and sunken and defined. And there we have it. The cover is most of the way done. I do also like to take a bit of the woven tape and just like we put it on the spine of the text block, put it on here. Just gives it a little bit of extra reinforcement and you're not going to be see it be seeing it once the text block is attached into the book so the same thing just take it and make it shorter than the cover and stick it on just right down the middle and it's just going to give a little bit of reinforcement, give a little bit of extra strength to the parts that the book is going to bend, the cover is going to bend on and is only attached by a thin layer of paper. Okay, so that is that. And we are ready to attach our text block to our book. For this, what we're going to want to do is take and take and put glue on one side of the text block and then close our book around it and make sure that it's situated in and then open it up and put glue on the other side and close our book around it and make sure that it's situated in. Uh, that's part of why we attach to these cover pages. These will glue down to here so that when you open the book, you see that. That'll be the inside of the cover. See how clever we are? It's clever. <laughs> um, so, same thing as before. Cover everything with glue. And brush it out. go and then what we do actually want is a tiny bit of space between the spine of the text block and the spine of the cover not a whole lot just a, a hair's breadth of width that'll give it a little bit of room to maneuver so just the tiniest bit of space I'll just line that up and then Scooch it just a little bit away, and then close our book. And smooth it on, and check to make sure that it is even all around, top to bottom, side to side, front to back. Okay, good. 
Good, good, good. And then, same thing to the other side. Then once we've closed it and made sure that everything's even, we're gonna wanna leave it for like 24 hours because it's gonna wanna dry. Um, but after 24 hours and the book has dried and set itself up, we can come back to it and decorate it, you know, put, uh, put decorations on the cover and on the inside pages and maybe add pockets or ribbons or buttons or whatever, you know, decorations. There we go. All right. Settle it down. Press it on. Stand it up and check it for evenness from top to bottom, from down the side from front to back. All right, everything looks good. There we go. So we will set this aside and give it 24 hours to dry out. And we will have another video another day where we decorate this thing. I had a lot of fun with this and you can stop there. That is a book. Congratulations, you have succeeded. You have now one book, Sideways Pineapples. <laughs> I will see you guys all another day and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you have other things that you would like to see me try or do, definitely let me know. I am always interested in trying new things and Remember to subscribe. <laughs> Bye.